morning and welcome to the Power in the Word broadcast of the Pilgrim Progress Missionary Baptist Church, where Reverend Gerald Parker Sr. is our wonderful pastor. Our church motto is let's do it God's way. Expect a blessing. Let's listen. From St. Mark, the second chapter. Uh, and when you find St. Mark, the second chapter, would you be so kind as to turn to verse 15? Uh, we've been in St. Mark for a few months now, and I don't know about you, but I've been blessed. It just, just walking with Jesus step by step, step by step. And today we're going to walk with him again. Uh, St. Mark, the second chapter. Verse 15 says, And it came to pass that as Jesus sat at meat in his house, many publicans and sinners sat also together with Jesus and his disciples. For there were many, and they followed him. And when the scribes and Pharisees saw him eat with the publicans and sinners, they said unto his disciples, How is it that he eateth and drinketh with publicans and sinners? When Jesus heard it, he said unto them, They that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Dr. Jesus, the great physician. Say with me, Dr. Jesus, the great physician. Hallelujah today. I, I want to let you know here, thank God for these earthly doctors because earthly doctors, they, they are pretty good, but all they're doing is just, what, practicing. Most doctors hit and miss. Most doctors give you poison to put in your bodies. They know more about the poison they put in your bodies than the bodies that you have. And then they ask you to come back again and again and again. And what they'll do, they'll, they'll simply practice on you. I recommend Dr. Jesus, the great physician. Because not only is he, a, not only can he hear your physical ailments, but Dr. Jesus is a soul doctor. He's a soul physician. And we find that out today. In St. Mark, the second chapter, verses 15 to 17, and I give God praise. Let's, let's come on, let, come on, let follow me as we follow Jesus. I said, follow me as we follow Jesus, because uh, a few weeks ago, we found out that as Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee, and he had a crowd with him, the scripture says, and he stopped and taught them. But as you go a little further, the scripture says he passed by a man named Levi. And Levi was a publican. And publicans were hated by the people in Capernaum. People hated publicans. Publicans were outcasts. Publicans were considered the riffraff of the community. Publicans were the lowest of the lowest. Publicans were considered sinners. Publicans were so bad until they were not allowed into the sanctuary. Publicans were so bad until you would not want a publican to be a witness at your court hearing because people didn't believe in publicans. But I've come to tell you, on that day, Jesus stopped and asked that publican and said, follow me. I have come to let you know that Jesus specializes in outcasts. He specializes in runts and rejects. And, 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 he, and he had a nerve to ask this outcast, ask this low life fellow to follow him. 
And the scripture says, Pilgrim Progress, you got to read St. Luke's account. St. Luke says that, first of all, uh, Levi left all, rose up, and followed him. And so what I got to, so the lesson we can learn from that today is, if you're going to follow Jesus, you got to leave something. And, not, and, and you, you can't just leave some things. You have to leave all, everything. He left all, stood up, and he followed Jesus. He went from a publican to a saved man and became a child of God and a disciple of Jesus Christ. But look now at verse 15, the scene changes. And it says, and it came to pass. Yeah, yeah. We have just left uh, the seaside of Galilee. And the scripture says now, and it came to pass that as Jesus said, at meet in his house. Stop right there, Pilgrim Progress. I don't want you to get the wrong understanding. We see now Jesus has just left the seaside and now he's in, it says, in his house and now he's sitting at meat eating at a table. I want to uh, announce to everybody here that this house that Jesus was in was not his house. It, it, it was somebody said, hold it, Pastor. It says his house to hold it. I want to let you know that after Matthew was saved, he was so happy that Jesus saved his soul. And he was so happy that Jesus saw, looked beyond his fault and saw his need. After he started following Jesus, he was so happy until guess what he did? He threw a party in the honor of Jesus Christ at his own house. I said, that's right, Matthew, who was, who was a publican, Matthew, who was rich, after Jesus came into his life, he had a party at his house, and he invited Jesus to be the guest of honor. I have come all the way to ask you this, have Jesus saved your heart? Have he saved your soul? And I've come to tell you here that if he saved your soul, if he set you free, he should be an honored guest at your house. Oh, holy, wait a minute. Did, didn't you just say, Pastor Parker, that, public, that publicans were low, low people? Did you just say that the publicans were outcasts? Yes, they were. But guess what? Matthew was a former publican. He was a poor former outcast. Yeah, yeah, because when he met Jesus, his, his whole demeanor changed. Yeah, he was no longer, yeah, uh, an outcast. He was now an incast, and he was now part of the family of Jesus Christ. But he was so happy to have Jesus in his life until he invited all of his low-down friends. Yeah, it, I, that's all he could invite because all he knew all of his life were low-down publicans. And so guess who he invited to his party? He invited other publicans. He invited other sinners. He invited other low-down people. He invited the unchurched folks to his party. And guess what happened? You know what happened here? As we look in this party scene, I can see the atmosphere now. I can hear men talking and rumbling every night and then you might hear a curse word. You see, you got to understand these were publicans. These were the outcasts. And I can see every now and then I probably could hear a curse word. I, I hear rumbling. I hear people talking. But guess, guess who's sitting in the midst of those publicans and sinners? I said, guess who's sitting in the midst of those publicans and sinners? Nothing but Jesus Christ, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. There he is sitting not only around them, but the scripture says the publicans and sinners were sitting with him at the table with Jesus, eating and drinking. Now, I don't know what they were drinking. Now, I'm not going to tell you now because, because they had regular things. But the point is that, yeah, somebody said, hold it now, Pastor. Are you telling me that Jesus was with all those low-down folks? Yes, he was with them. But he was not participating in what they were doing. 
but, they, but he was with them, and they felt comfortable being with him. Why? Because he had just saved Matthew, who was an outcast, and now here they are in the same house with the same man who had saved, who had saved Matthew. And here they are sitting with you. And can I, tell, can, I, can I say something right now? I got to say something here. As I look at this thing, I have to say something about the church. Sometimes what we'll do, we'll build our buildings, and then we'll put a sign on the building. We'll organize our ministries, put robes on the choir, and then wait for sinners to come. I say we build our buildings, put robes on the choir, organize our ministries, and then have church every Sunday and wait for sinners to come. And what I'm trying to let you know is simply this, that is not the job description of the church. And sometimes we'll build walls, we'll build walls up in between the church and the neighborhood, and we hope and pray that no unlost and no undesirables will come in our church. Because if people are coming to church looking different from us and smelling different from us with bad reputations, those are not the kind of people that we want to associate with. After all, we are a church and we are saved folks and, and we should be around saved folks. If, if I want a doctor, I want a Christian doctor. If I want a postman, I want a Christian postman. Yeah, yeah. If I want a teacher, I want a Christian teacher. I want to, I want to associate with nothing but Christians, but I've come to tell you here, Jesus took time to, to sit down with the riffraff of the community. He sat down with sinners and those who were low lighted and those who were down and out. And he, we, 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 he sat down with the unchurched there in the house. And this should teach us a lesson. And the lesson this should teach us is that we should never feel like we're better than anyone else. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to help somebody. He, he, he could have even said, no, I'm not going to go in there because all those men in there and they're cursing and they're drinking and they're doing all of this. But Jesus sat down at the table with those brothers. You could imagine there was somebody else there the scribes and the Pharisees, the, 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 the religious segment of Capernaum. Now, now, this is what I don't understand. How did the scribes and Pharisees get there? Because these were the so-called church folks. These were the men who studied the word of God. These were the men who copied the word of God. These were Pharisees, and Pharisees were, 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 were another word for Pharisee is separated ones. Pharisees, were, they were so cognizant of trying to be holy, and they dared not touch or be around anybody that seemed unholy. Some Pharisees were so strict until when they walked out of the house, they would put a blindfold on their eyes so they wouldn't lust for looking at a woman. They called some of those Pharisees blind and blooded. And they called some of them blind and blooded because when they walked out of the house, they put a, a blindfold on them. And you could imagine as they had a blindfold, they would walk and fall down. Why? Because they didn't want to even look on a woman to lust after her. These men were self-righteous, thought they were better than anybody else. And guess what they did? They said, look at him over there. Now, by the way, what I want to know is how did they get there in the first place? They were not invited to that party because this was the low, the low class, the riffraff of the community. I'll tell you why they were there. They were there so they could criticize Jesus. And I've come to tell you in every crowd, in every group, and whenever you have an assembly, you're going to have some critics. You're going to have some folks who are there not so much for Jesus, but are there to criticize to see what's not going on. And so these, these Pharisees and these scribes uh, observe the master eating and drinking with these publicans and sinners, and all of a sudden, this is what they did. They didn't, I, I call them cowards.
cowardly critics. I said they were cowardly. They didn't want to criticize Jesus. So if you look at that text, instead of confronting Jesus, they confronted the disciples. Are y'all with me here? They didn't, they didn't confront Jesus, but they confronted his followers. And this is what they say. Verse 15, 16. How is it that he eateth and drinketh with publicans and sinners? <laughs> This, this, this is your master. This is the one you follow. And look at him now. He's eating with publicans and sinners. In, in, the, in the book of Matthew, it says, he's your master. He's your Lord. Why is it that he's eating with publicans and sinners? You are following him, and you are here with him with all this riffraff. Why is that Jesus is eating and drinking with these sinners? Pilgrim Progress and Visitors, as I go to my seat, I'm so glad to announce that while they were criticizing Jesus with the disciples, Jesus overheard what they were saying. I say he overheard what they were saying. And, and you know, I, 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 this is what I've learned about the master. He could have easily ignored what they were saying, but instead of ignoring it, he confronted them. I say he could, sometimes, sometimes it's not wise to keep your mouth closed. There's a time to open up your mouth, and then there's a time, yeah, to say some things. And at this time, and so what he did was, he answered their question. Their question was, why is it that this man, Jesus, is eating and drinking with publicans and sinners? I was reading one commentary that says that Jesus gave them an apology. No, he did not give them an apology. And he, didn't, he didn't apologize for being with those sinners. He did not apologize for sitting down with the, with the publicans and sinners. Instead of giving them an apology, he gave them his mission statement. When Jesus, look at verse 17, when Jesus heard it, he said unto them, my answer to you is this. They that are whole have no need of a physician, but they that are sick. And somebody said, why would he say, what he was letting them know was this. There are a lot of sick folks in this house. Uh, I'm not talking about sick with diabetes or sick with high blood pressure or, or sick with cancer. There are some sin sick people in this house and guess what? I'm Dr. Jesus. And I've come to tell everybody here, my brothers and sisters, that we talk about all, there are, there are 1,500 different kinds of diseases that you can die with, but the most terrible disease of all is sin itself. Sin is a sickness. Sin is a disease. And sin, my, it, it, it's a blood disease because we were born in sin. Sin is a corrupting disease. It will slowly corrupt you. Sin is a deafening disease because Jesus healed deaf people and Jesus healed uh, blind people. But I've come to tell you, sin is a treacherous thing. Sin will tear you up and the middle letter of sin is I. Sin is an I-centered type of situation. And I've come to tell you, the wages of sin is death. But Jesus said, he said, what I'm trying to let you know is, I am the physician and I'm a doctor and that's why I'm here. I'm here because I can help these sin sick folks. I've come to tell everybody here, the reason why Jesus was there was because he knew it was full of men who were sick with sin. And I've come, he said, I am a physician. And I, 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 I've heard you long enough. Can I tell you here? Jesus is the glorious physician. And notice what he said. He said, they that are whole have no need of the physician. Notice he didn't say a physician because I've come to tell you, yeah, there's only one doctor that can cure sin. There's just one doctor that can give a, give a, a remedy for sin. 
There's just one name given unto men whereby men must be saved, and that's the name of Jesus Christ. He is the glorious physician. He is the doctor of doctors. And I've come to tell you, in order to be a doctor, yeah, you have to have gone to school and you've had to already had a diploma in order to be a doctor. You wouldn't want to go into the doctor's office and all he had was a high school diploma. Yeah, and I've come to tell you that Jesus does have a diploma. And can I read some of the words on Dr. Jesus' diploma? Uh, here's some of the words on Dr. Jesus' diploma. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good things unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. I've come to tell you, my brothers and sisters, yeah, you thought that love man or that love woman break your heart. But I've come to tell you, sin will break your heart. And I've come to tell you, I don't know how you feel about it, but there are many people who might be here this morning and your little heart might be in little pieces. But I have good news for you. Hallelujah. Dr. Jesus has enough power. He knows where every piece of your broken heart is. And he can take those little pieces and put them back together. But I've come to tell you, he can do more than put the pieces back together. Yeah, he'll give you a brand new heart. I'm talking about Dr. Jesus. Well, another thing here, you need to ask, when you go to a doctor, you want to know where has he practiced? But I've come to tell you, Jesus' practice is all over the world. Yeah, he's healed sin sick people all over the world. And what I like about Dr. Jesus, you see, some doctors, when they give you medicine, they'll tell you, you'll feel better in about a week or two. But I'm so glad to announce when Jesus come in your life, you are healed immediately. Yeah, and you don't have to worry about the sin coming back in your life. But there's something that I say about, about doctors. Sometimes the bill is a little high. Yeah, you might pay your deductible. Yeah, yeah, but when you get the remaining bill, the price, uh, your, your Medicare pays 80%, but that 20% can almost bankrupt you. But I'm so glad that after Jesus performed his job, the price, no bill. You don't have to worry about no bill. You have to worry about no because the price has already been paid. It was paid there on Calvary's cross. And the good news is that Jesus died on the cross. But I've come to tell you one more thing, and I'm sitting down here. Sin is a blood disease. We got that disease from our parents, Adam and Eve. We were born in sin. And sin is a blood disease. And the only way that sin can be eradicated, it takes special blood. I said it takes special blood. And I'm so glad that on Calvary's cross, Jesus shed his blood for your sins and mine. And early Sunday morning, he got up out of the grave. Thank God for Dr. Everybody said Dr. Jesus. Thank God for Dr. Jesus. And I don't know how you feel about it. Yeah, you can come just as you are. No sin, no sin, no sin is too bad for Dr. Jesus to heal you of your situation. I don't know about you, but I used to be a patient. Uh, have you ever been a patient? Have you ever, I said, have you ever been a patient? Have you ever been in your sin? Did Jesus come by? Did he heal you of your sin? Can you bear witnesses? I know what the Lord can do. He picked me up, turned me around, gave me a new heart. I'm a child of God. If any man be in Christ, 
he is a new creature. But one day, my brothers and sisters, that same Dr. Jesus is coming back again. And when he comes back again, he's coming back to all of his patients. Can I get a witness here? I don't know how y'all feel about it, but I'm so glad today that Jesus is a healer. He's Jehovah Rapha. He's, yes, sir, he will heal a sin sick soul. I don't know how you feel about it, but one day I was sin sick, and one day you were sin sick. But guess what? We came to Jesus just as we was, weary, wounded, and sad. We found in him a resting place, and now he's made us glad. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Dr. Jesus. Physician Jesus. And I just want to tell everybody here, to the utmost, Jesus saved. To the utmost, Jesus saved. To the utmost, Jesus saved. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. He's Dr. Jesus, the glorious physician. No sickness is beyond his ability. And Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who said he was a physician. And we pray right now, Lord, as your word is going forth, that you would touch hearts and that you would continue to touch minds. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. He's still healing. His blood still works. That, that child that, that you're having problems with, they just need Jesus. Some of you have sin ravaged homes. I want you to know that that house just need Jesus. Some of you are battling with habits and things that instead of you controlling it, it's controlling you. But you need to turn over to Jesus. And he'll take that taste out of your mouth. He'll take those desires away and give you a brand new heart and cause you to, re to repent and turn away from your sins. Thank you for viewing the Power in the Word broadcast. If you would like more information about Pilgrim Progress Baptist Church services and ministries, please visit us at ppbc1912 at aol.com or call our church office at 501-372-372. 4429 where our efficient church secretary will be happy to assist you. Join us again on Wednesday and or Sunday mornings at 5 a.m. Be blessed.